news you can use, some news that we've got out there. I'm going to do just a brief one this morning because we've got uh, this other stuff to go through, which I think you're going to find uh, is uh, very instrumental. And um, I'd like to welcome uh, the team. Hey, Ash. Uh, hey, Kevin. How you doing? Good morning. How's everybody? Good morning, Jeff. Awesome. And if you guys get a chance, if you feel so inclined, go ahead and put your camera on so we can see your smiling faces this morning. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, an article that was on CNN yesterday uh, called Millennial Home Buyer Regret. And this is one of the reasons that the market is all of a sudden starting to gum up. And by gum up, I mean we are getting a huge amount of properties coming onto the market and buyers are backing away from the market. And it talks about, in this particular article, it talks about this young lady, uh, this millennial who lives in Indianapolis named Kelly Robinson. Kelly had decided last fall that she wanted to buy a home. She's lived in an apartment for a number of years, seven or eight years, something like that. She had set up for herself a budget of 250,000. She went out and got pre-approved. Uh, for that. And then she started looking at houses and she saw a huge amount of houses that were uh, in that time, Indianapolis, certain areas of Indianapolis, and especially the suburbs of Greenville and places around uh, close to that were, uh, you know, pretty hot, pretty on fire. A lot of people were putting in offers uh, above asking on houses. And after doing this for a month or two earlier this year, especially in January and February, she decided to uh, take a knee and sit on the sidelines, no longer wanted to go after, uh, you know, that American home ideal of uh, dream of home ownership. Um, she said that she wanted to be happy today. She wanted to buy a house that made her happy today, but she also wanted to be happy a year from now and 10 years from now. And she didn't, although she could make the payments, she wasn't willing to spend 350 for a house that she really had only budgeted uh, 250 for. And so that is, kind of anecdotal for what we're seeing all over the country. The, the home buyers who make up uh, the majority of the home buying public are first time home buyers. These are folks that um, haven't bought a home up to now. Typically now in today's day and age, it's millennials. And, um, and so, you know, you're seeing a huge amount of people sitting on the sidelines waiting for prices to come down. That, and that is having the effect of more houses are sitting on the market for longer periods of time. People aren't getting asking price. They're getting uh, or multiple offers on it above asking price or getting asking price or even below in some areas of the country. And so that has expanded the supply <clears throat> while decreasing the amount of buyers. And so we're seeing this thing flip on end. And I, I think this is going to be a trend you're going to see for the next couple of years. There was actually an article out uh, over the weekend uh, advising first-time home buyers and particular millennials to wait until the end of 2022 uh, in order to buy a home because the, uh, you know, with the end of the moratorium on foreclosures and evictions coming up at the end of this month and next month nationally, depending on, you know, where you're at, and then also some state things that carry it beyond. Um, there's going to be a huge amount of homes come back on the market. There is not a solution. There's not a, a, a way to figure this thing out where the, the market can absorb between two and 8 million new homes uh, in a short period of time. The lenders are ready. They're building up their foreclosure departments, their REO departments, things like that. And unfortunately, the government's kicked the can down the road so far that we're gonna have this big mass of problem all at one time. So they said that this is not gonna be like what happened in 2008, 9, 10, and 11, because they're prepared for it, but yet, because of the government's interference, intervention, sticking their nose into these things, um, this has been a this is going to be a big problem in my uh, estimation. Uh, you're going to see a lot of property hit the market. Normally, you know, the market can absorb 500,000 houses a month, something like that. Um, there's over that on the market, well over that on the market now. Uh, it was probably 300,000, you know, in January, February with you know three million buyers so there would be 10 buyers for every house now there's a million buyers and uh, you know six hundred thousand houses but when you have eight million houses flood the market at one time even if it's over a year 
that takes that number from 600,000 to a million two, the buyer pool has shrunk to in half. So then all of a sudden you have entered a rapid, very rapidly, a buyer's market. And it can flip just like this. I saw this thing happen before, but it was based on different things in 2007, eight, nine, and 10, or eight, nine, and 10. Um, I think the results are gonna be the same, just go round. So long and short of it is I'd be very cautious and for the teams that, uh, you know, our teams, our various teams and the teams that I manage, I'm telling these guys, do not buy uh, long positions on rehabable properties. Do not do wholesaling, or if you do wholesaling, figure out quickly how to do seller finance stuff. And if you, if you are a good wholesaler and you have a specific area and you know buyers who are still buying, but my buddies around the country who do rehabbing typically had been running three to four houses at one time um, for the last five years. Now they're down to one. They're being very cautious. And some of that is, um, you know, because of their concern over the economy. Some of it is also because uh, of the cost of inflation on some of the products and actually the availability of products, lumber and pump plumbing supplies, metal based products and things like that. So, you know, people are being more cautious. And if the average rehabber was doing an average of three houses at one time before they're doing one now, that also shrinks that pool too. So I'd be very cautious about those things. The flip side is if you are good at uh, transactional engineering, you know how to turn anything that comes in to you to a deal, you can make a ton of money. <clears throat> and there's lots of going to be lots of subject to houses and things like that coming. So that's uh, kind of all I want to talk about in terms of news you can use. We'll talk more about this later next week or early uh, later this week or early next week.